Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life, and we are at Straight Talk for Parents here. As we are here every Monday night, we are here on the Eastern Standard Time of 6 p.m. each and every Monday night, and we bring you special guests to come to just talk to parents about different things when dealing with your children and raising your children at all age levels. We try to cover all of them. Uh, I've got uh, some, a very special guest with me tonight. I can't wait to even take notes myself of what she is all about. She has got so much knowledge when it comes to something that everybody does. Everybody. And you want to know what that is? Well, you can probably see with the hat that she has on, this, my guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is Chef Nettie. Annette is her name, and we are going to bring her in right now. But she was she birthed a movement with Body Image and, and Cafe Nettie's saltless seasoning uh, blends. Uh, she is goes way back in her in her cooking history. She is an author. She has wrote an awesome book that we're going to talk about tonight called A Lifestyle Eating Change. And it's a six-week daily prayer journal to eating right. Now, wouldn't you just like to know how to eat right? Sometimes we don't. You know, Dr. Keith has lost 40 pounds last year. And then, oh, yeah, you didn't know that, did you, Chef? And then also this year, uh, I started on another little program because some of that came back around the holidays, Chef. Maybe you can tell me how to get through those holidays. Uh, with eating, but uh, I'm back on my routine and just trying to lose a little bit more. But we're so excited. This is not about weight loss, my friends, tonight. This is not about, you know, just making sure you never eat a sweet or anything like that. It's about eating properly and journaling to help you eat properly. I do want to welcome each and every one of our Zoom members. I know that we get more viewers on Periscope and Twitter feeds and, and Facebook Live. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we thank you so much for joining us each week here. We appreciate the comments that come in. So to my Facebook message uh, folks tonight, if you have a question for Chef Medi, go ahead and send it to. We'll make it send it to us, and we'll make a note on Periscope, and then we will bring it uh, to Chef Medi here shortly as we get into answering some questions. So without further ado, my friends, we have with us Miss Annette, and she is Chef Nettie, who has wrote this wonderful book called uh, Six Week Daily Prayer Journal to a Lifestyle Eating Change. Welcome, 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 my dear friend, Chef Nettie. How are you? Hey, hello out there. I am so blessed. And I, first, I want to thank you and your wife, your lovely wife for inviting me and um, just having an awesome and amazing day. I, I hope everyone is blessed and just thanking you for this opportunity to put the book, to put the knowledge about eating healthier. Um, and as you say, not a diet plan, but a healthy eating plan. I do the 80-20% rule. Eat 80% healthy and 20%. You can just mess off. You can eat chips and anything. So that's my rule. 80%. Now, Chef, are you telling me that I can eat 80% of the bag of a bag of chips? No. no. <laughs> I said 80% healthy. Oh, 80% healthy. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, even, and not even 20% chips. Don't you dare eat those 20% chips unless they are sweet potato chips or kale chips. Now. Well, now, Chef, I'm going to tell you, you'd be very proud of me. I love protein shakes in the morning, and uh, I, I, I do very well. My wife is a wonderful mixer of protein shakes, but we came across a, a recipe that had kale, spinach, and cucumbers in it, and guess, I had that this morning, and chef, it was unbelievably tasty. I couldn't believe that I was drinking a protein shake that tasted sweet. She put a couple of strawberries in there, I think, too, to help spice it up. But it was phenomenal. So I, I think I found my new breakfast drink. What do you think? I think it's great. I mean, because we all know that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It gives you fuel. You know, if we think about it, after we have slept eight to six to eight hours, that's sort of like a mini fast. 
So you haven't had any liquid, any food or anything. So the first thing I want you to start doing is getting a glass of water when you first wake up and then go to your routine and then your shake. Because you have to remember, you got to wake up those organs, wake up that intestines. And what better way to wake them up is with a glass of water. Oh, my goodness. I did that too, Chef. So I think it'd be crazy. <laughs> and I ran six miles today. Oh, my God. Okay. Now you're inspiring me. Okay. I, I'm encouraged. So. Yeah. I, I've just been trying my best, and it's coming off. I, I was very pleased when I got on the scale this past weekend. So, But enough about all that. Let's talk about your book. Um, the six week daily prayer journal, but I would like to digress for just a moment and introduce you to my co host down in Australia, and that is Miss Ariel Wheeler, who got on with us tonight. I appreciate you coming in, Ariel. Say hello to Chef Nettie. Hi, Chef Nettie. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for being on our show today. It's absolutely amazing to have you here. Hi, beautiful. How are you? It's good to see you. Likewise, absolutely. I can't wait to see what we're going to talk about today on the Straight Talk for Parents. Ooh, it's so exciting, the topic of food. Yummy. Absolutely. Well, we do welcome you and Ariel tonight, all the way from Australia. We appreciate you joining us. Chef, so you're getting your word out to Australia tonight, as well as we have, we have viewers that will come in and through our repurposing all over the world. So we're so excited just about having you on. Now let's get to talking about it. Chef, why did you write this book? This book right here is really a great journal as we started putting, uh, involving ourselves with going through it because we've met you in person and you're a lovely person uh, and to talk to just about anything. But when it comes to food, you know what you're talking about. So tell us, why did this come about? Why did you write it? And what are you doing to help parents and children understand that we have to eat properly? Okay, well, the book goes way back. Um, right after I got out of culinary school, a couple of friends of mine, some were getting married, some just wanted to lose weight, some wanted to learn how to cook. And so they used to meet at my house and we used to have these classes. And then, so I'm a journaling person. I love to write, I love to journal. So I started giving them scriptures by the day and making uh, them write about why they didn't eat, why they didn't drink enough water, what made them go on a bench, you know, just sort of that kind of thing. And so I sort of kind of just put it all together in a notebook. And actually, I held on to it for like 15 years and then um, had the opportunity to put it into print. And so um, it was an awesome uh, opportunity because as people started reading it, they really started really understanding the connection between food, and prayer and meditation and how it is so important because actually the last 10, 15 years, we've had a lot of sickness and disease come up in our nation, a lot of cancer of many forms, high blood pressure, diabetes, gallstones, uh, juvenile diabetes for you know obesity for children. And so um, all of that came into fruition because then I started teaching classes to the children and learning that they didn't know what a vegetable was, what a fruit was. Some of them only related to French fries. And um, I also started really finding out that one to two year olds were getting French fries like two to three times a day. No vegetables, no fruit. And that just really blew my mind. So that was why I wrote the journal. So because we know that children imitate their parents. If they see the parents eating bad, then they're gonna eat bad. If the parents eat good, they'll eat good. And so I sort of tried to try to change the parents' lifestyle, and then the children will follow. And then I started finding out the children were encouraging the parents to eat better, to do better, to go walking. And, you know, and one thing I also found out, Keith, is that we got away from the kitchen dining room table of sitting down to eat. You know, most people eat dinner in the car. Run, on the run, they don't sit down, bless their food, enjoy talking and communicating with family. So the book is sort of kind of a combination of spiritualness, awareness, food, and family. I can't hear you, Keith. I'm sorry. 
I, I try to mute myself so I don't have any background noise. Sorry about that. But when I was a little boy, I uh, had I was the youngest of four boys. But if I didn't get to the table early and get me a piece of chicken and hide it under the table before we started eating, I didn't get the good pieces of chicken, right? So, I mean, I understand that, that when we are – you know, when we're young, boys, generally boys, I'm sure girls too, some don't like vegetables as children, right? So do you have any tips for parents how to get your kids to thinking about eating properly or doing something with the vegetables that can help us enjoy those vegetables? Well, first, don't make a big deal out of it. You know what I'm saying? And if you haven't started when they were little and you're just not starting at an older age, gradually get it into them. Because the more you say eat your vegetables, they're going to be like, I don't like vegetables. I, you know. And so you have to introduce it to them. Don't be afraid to dip. I'm serious. Um, Alfredo sauce, a little cheese, a little ranch dressing. Let them dip. Whatever it is to encourage them to eat the vegetables, let them do it. Peanut butter, nut butter. You know, a lot of children have a lot of allergies, so you have to be careful what they dipping in. But you find out what's good for you. And then um, you gradually bring them to it, bring it to them, to the table, and find out what they like. If they like carrots, if they eat a ton of carrots, that's fine. They like broccoli. That's fine too. How I started doing it was incorporating it into sauces like spaghetti. You shred up some carrots, uh, some bell peppers. Once the tomato sauce is over, they will not know the difference, you know, and they'll eat it. What you're trying to do is get it into them. Um, I'm a person, if you put the fruit on the table or on the counter, they'll see it, they'll grab it. If you hide it in the refrigerator, you'll look around and those grapes will turn to raisins and you won't have anything. So, so leave it out and just, you know, just make it fun, you know, cut it in different shapes, uh, make it pretty for them, sprinkle some uh, parsley on it or something, just anything to get them to eat it. And I guarantee you they'll eat it. Well, that is, uh, <clears throat> that's some good tips there. You know, I, uh, you're saying it's okay to dip, but we're not supposed to double dip, right? Well, no, don't double dip. No, everybody has their own container for dipping. <laughs> I don't like double dipping. <laughs> you grow up with boys, you know. I mean, we just do whatever we could, right? Exactly. All right. So, well, I'm going to reset and just tell everybody who we are again. They're coming in late. You build a little audience on Periscope. We're excited about that. But, folks, I am Dr. Keith with Dads for Life, and I am here each and every Monday night at 6 p.m. with my co-host down in Australia, who I'm getting ready to – in that way. Uh, Miss Ariel Wheeler, and she'll tell you a little bit about what she does, but also uh, she's got some special questions because she has a little one for Chef Nettie tonight, I'm sure. And we're going to share Chef Nettie's Facebook page. We're going to share the, uh, the, the other things that, that she's got going on. So we're really excited about it. So we welcome each and every one of you, all of those that are watching live on the web. So let's go all the way down to Australia, Miss Chef. Chef Nettie, and let's talk to Miss Ariel Wheeler. Hello, Ariel. Hey, everyone. Thank you for the reset. I'm so excited to be here. We have the amazing Chef Nettie on the line here today, and I cannot wait to talk about some amazing questions that I have to ask and sharing some amazing tips on how we can get our children to eat those nasty little veggies. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little bit about me. I'm the founder of I Her Brand. My name is Ariel Wheeler. I am a visibility creator, writer and coach. I help heart-centered creative entrepreneurs like many of you on the line here today. And that includes Chef Nettie who loves to cook food. So I help people just like you to manifest cash flow on repeat by creating a connected community who repeatedly buys from you. And I love stories. I'm super passionate about stories because we've all got a story and this is how Straight Talk for Parents came together with Keith and I. So I'm absolutely thrilled to get this party started and talk about those terrible little veggies. Okay, Keith, would you like me to share uh, Nettie's uh, book and website for everybody? Yes, go ahead and do a little commercial for her on the book, and then we'll show the website and yeah, sure. some of her spices that she also has available. Absolutely. Okay, let's get this started. I'm going to share Nettie's website first. Let me know when you can see the screen share, and we'll get started. Oh, there I am. 
Why are you doing that? Oh, she's so cute. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Who's that sexy lady? <laughs> in, the kitchen, in the kitchen. Absolutely. Is that your kitchen, Nitty? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So tell us a little bit about your website. Well, the website is a culinary um, kitchen and urban market. And the reason why I named it that is because I want everyone to have a culinary experience when they encounter me. Um, as I said before, we get away from the kitchen. A lot of people are afraid of the kitchen, don't like the kitchen. I love the kitchen. That is the best place. Family always gather in the kitchen. Stories are told in the kitchen. Recipes are shared in the kitchen. Um, you just have a great time in the kitchen. And so that's my plot is to try to bring fun and family back to the kitchen so that we can cook and have fun and not be afraid of what you do. If you mess it up, that's okay. Who's going to know? Only you will know. Um, the the website, I do uh, cooking classes uh, for young people, adults. They have date night, um, birthday parties, junior chef birthday parties. Everything in the kitchen is made from scratch. Everything. Pasta is homemade. Sauces are homemade. Pizza crust is homemade. Um, and then I have a program that I deal with the children called Dirt to Dinner. And what they do, they plant a little... Um, just probably like three or four containers of peas or carrots or an herb. And they take those home, of course, and they learn how to take care of it. They learn how to water it, to make it grow, to put it in the sun. And then after that, we move on to whatever that um, course is, whether it's making homemade pizza, homemade pasta, uh, Chinese food, Italian food, small pies, um, just everything that a child could want they, you know, and they learn how to use their hands. They learn teamwork. They learn cleanup because they have to clean up. They learn sharing because after they cook, they all sit down and each group shares with the other group what they made. And so it's an exciting time for them. And I think they really enjoy. The parents usually hang around and watch their children because they're amazed at how they cook and how they enjoy cooking. And so they also be able to take the recipes home with them and they can try them out at home with the family. So it's just an exciting time. That's why I want it to be a culinary experience. Urban Market is because every third Saturday, I have a farmer's market there. I know some friends who own a farm and I go and we pick the vegetables and come back and sell it to the community. So the community can see the fresh fruits and vegetables in season and um, purchase them uh, because the area that I'm in is sort of like a dry area. They only have like one store. And so it's teaching the children that that's okay. You can have a, a little urban garden with some vegetables and an herb garden and we're just out of pots. And so I want to let them know that don't let that stop you from eating healthy, that you can always pull off a carrot, a strawberry, um, a mint leaf, a chocolate mint leaf, um, oregano, thyme, all sorts of herbs and spices that they probably never knew or had heard of. So that's the culinary kitchen. That is amazing. So can we book any dates with you as well? Because I see the calendar here. So is that calendar where we can um, schedule you in? Uh, well, right now it's sort of kind of off key. I have a young lady working on it, but they can inbox me and then I will send them a correct calendar. Awesome. Awesome. That's amazing. So we're just going to pop over to your book and can you see the, uh, your book page there on Amazon? Yes, I do. Awesome. Absolutely. Body Image Prayer Journal to a Lifestyle Eating Change. So just tell us uh, just a quick recap on what your book is so everyone here can see it and we all know that it's on Amazon. So just tell us a little bit about your book, please. Well, the book is a prayer journal and it's called Body Image because um, a lot of folks, a lot of folks, we focus on the outside. We'll spend tons of money on the outside with shoes, hair, clothing. But when it comes to the inside, we sort of kind of get cheap. And so I want everyone to understand that body image is from the inside out. Uh, we want 
your insides to run like a well-oiled machine. It's sort of kind of like a car. It has different parts in the motor, and so does our body. And we have to take care of our kidneys, our bladder, our lungs, of everything. And so the prayer book is like a six-week journal. The first one, first week is on prayer. And it shows you that just getting closer to yourself, meditating, journaling. And then the second week is your attitude and discipline. We sort of kind of go through a course of uh, changing your lifestyle. Um, we don't want you to just completely think about diet, but a lifestyle eating change. A diet lasts for a while. It's sort of kind of a fad. You forget, you get angry, you fall off, and then you never go back. But if it's a lifestyle, you're okay with it. You know, if you eat a chocolate donut or a slice of pizza, it's okay. You know, you don't you're like, oh, I haven't fallen off the wagon. So you just eat your pizza, go back to your green smoothie in the morning, go back to your exercising, and just move on. And then life goes on. And you focus more on your health opposed to what you look on the outside. Outside is good. Everybody wants to be cute. But you have to focus on the inside because everybody wants to live a long, healthy life. And we want our children to be healthy as well. Absolutely. That is amazing because when we talk about body image, we so associate the body image with what we look like on the outside. And we forget that a whole body image is the inside as well. And my co-host, Keith, always says, start them young. And he truly believes that. And I believe that as well. The earlier you start them, the easier it will be when they grow up to deal with um, what society, you know, presses on us to have that perfect body image. And when we talk about that, that's why there's so many things out in the world that are quite horrible because we don't have that understanding that food is fun. It's supposed to be colourful. It's supposed to be nutritious. It's supposed to be fuel for our body. And with all the fad diets out there, I'm sure that you can relate to this too, Chef Mini, is that when we are cooking food, we're taught to go to convenient foods rather than actually eating what's supposed to come out of the ground. And we're taught that it's not okay to eat healthy. We should be eating all these fast, fast food food places when we actually shouldn't be eating those things, only in moderation, but we should be eating those great food and actually enjoy cooking and make it a family connection, make it a family fun time. So I'm going to ask this question that relates to having family fun time. Since I'm a young mum, my daughter is two and a half years old, so how can I incorporate making cooking fun for her so she gets to enjoy that experience? Well, what you can do if you're making a salad, let her tear up the lettuce. Um, I mean, it's very easy. Who's going to measure if the lettuce is correctly cut or what? So let her tear up the lettuce. And then you um, add some fruit, cut up some grapes in half and throw them in. Let her put them in the salad. And then whatever it is you do, shredded carrots are good. And because, you know, they're already shredded and it won't be hard for her. She can throw them in and you can pretend like she's Emerald the cook and just say bam or something like that. And she can add it. I mean, you can, <laughs> she can toss it with the uh, forks and the a spoon. Um, she can shake up the dressing. You can make a dressing in a mason jar. Let her shake that up. Uh, if you're rolling out pizza, say you have the already made uh, pizza dough, let her roll it out. I mean, it's so many things that she could do and that she can feel that she's a part of dinner. Let her set the table, put the spoon down, you know, not the knife or anything, put a spoon and a fork. Let her set her cups and her glasses down, fold the napkins. There are so many things that they can help and be a part of, even when you're making the grocery list. So, I mean, I know she's two, but pretty two is pretty smart nowadays, and they can tell you what they want and what we're getting ready to go to the store for and let her pick it out in the grocery store. That'll also help her calm down in the grocery store as well, and you can do for some for real shopping. Absolutely. I love it when we go grocery shopping because I tell her just about everything that we look past. I wouldn't say everything, but the first thing that we usually do is grab a yogurt so she can have a Greek yogurt while we're walking around. But at the same time, I just love how interactive she is. She's like, she waves to everybody. She points to things. That's actually a great tip, especially when we're grocery shopping because 
me as a mum, and I'm sure that there's lots of mums out there who can relate to this, that they have a screaming child in the trolley while they're walking around and their mind is going, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do to eliminate that noise? Because it's so embarrassing, because it is quite embarrassing when your child is in that trolley having a tantrum. So that is a great tip to help keep your child calm, you know, keep you calm as well so that you can have an enjoying experience. If he wants to go and have a horrible experience while you're grocery, why make that a fun activity where you're pointing out things, oh, what colour is that? What, what's that over there? So that is a really great tip. We actually have a question here from Periscope. I'm just going to bring it over to Keith quickly to get that uh, question answered for them. Yes, thank you, Ariel. And uh, Chef Nettie, someone asked a question on Periscope uh, that wanted to know, first of all, I thought you were cute in the hat, so that was good. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? I said they thought you were cute in the hat, but uh, the, your chef, your chef's hat, right, you are cute, that's right, with or without it. But they want to know how long you've been a chef. Um, were you taught as a child how to cook? Both, yes to both. Um, I used to go with my grandmother when she used to cook, and so I learned at a very early age. Um, she used to prepare food, and I would hang with her and see her cooking. And then just as I got older, um, I just loved it. I loved being in the kitchen, and then I got married early. And so I had to uh, try to outcook my mother-in-law to try to keep my husband you know, at home, so we wouldn't always have to go to her house. So I learned her, a lot of her recipes as well. And I've been a chef since 2001. I went to uh, the Art Institute Culinary School, graduated. Um, and at that time, my daughter was asking me, what was I going to be uh, when I grew up? Because she was like, okay, you really need to start thinking about the future. And so she had uh, scheduled an appointment for me at the Art Institute to go look at it. And I toured the school, fell in love with it, and um, went there. I was the oldest person there. I think I told you the story. I was the oldest person in the class, and all these young people and the uh, instructor had asked in the very first day, uh, she said, look around at each other because some of you guys will not be here at the end of the term. And so the young people, they had voted me uh, most likely not to finish with them. And so I looked around and it was like 17 of them gone. And so I did finish. And, um, and I've just been enjoying it ever since. I really didn't know what I wanted to do in the beginning. I thought I wanted to do a lot of catering, but I really didn't. I kept being led more back towards the teaching part, showing people how to uh, prepare food. Uh, someone is always asking me a question on how to do this or what tastes better with this. And so I was like, okay, God, well, what are you trying to tell me? And so it just kept leading me back to teaching, showing, sharing, and that's where I am right now. And you do that, you do that very well, uh, Chef, by the way. And I mean, you know, I, I just, when, when Glenda and I met you in person, it was just like, just sudden just attraction to the friendship family felt because you just have that knack about yourself and how to, how to, and, and that comes when you come to teaching and anything, you know, whether yeah. Ariel teaches someone about branding or I'm teaching a dad or working with a dad about trying to help him with his children. You have to have a passion as to what you're doing. Yeah. And it comes. Absolutely. I want to share your Facebook page and I want to talk about something. And then I have another question. I, I, come in I need to ask you okay so stand by okay. we'll share your page on tell us about the spices ah. yeah so we have your Facebook page here and uh -huh. um, I, I know that that you've got a lot going on with with the various uh, things that you do but you have these spices you know I, I just want to kind of find out a little bit more about these and how folks can get a hold of them Okay. Chef Nettie? Yes, I'm here. Okay, yeah. Did you hear? I, I just want to find out a little bit about your Facebook page here and what people okay. can do if they connect with it, but then also how they can get a hold of your spices. 
Okay, well, I have a line of saltless seasonings, um, and they have no sodium, no MSG, no preservatives. They're great for meats, vegetables, tofu, anything that you want to put them on because they're just that uh, much of a, a variety. Now, you see four blends right there, but I have other blends as well. That's a, uh, there's a Raging Cajun, which is kind of spicy. I have a classic European um, that's just made out of oregano, garlic, thyme, and pepper. And then there's a classic uh, herb. And then a zesty lemon, which I use a lot for seafood and shrimp. Then I have a lemon rosemary, a Caribbean jerk, a chili season blend, a taco season blend. I also have a jambalaya rice mix, a jalapeno cornbread mix, a beer bread herb mix, um, a triple chocolate double fudge brownie mix, um, and a blondie brownie mix. And then I have cookie mix, which is a chocolate chip cookie mix, oatmeal chocolate chip mix, and a granny snickerdoodle cookie mix. And so those are all all seasonings. Um, now, some of them do have sugar in them, but that's for that 20% when you want to eat like just really, really bad. But the rest of the um, seasonings, they are no sodium, no MSG, and all you need is a little bit. And the reason why I started making the herbs and spices was because so often we put so much sodium on our food that you really don't taste the food. You really don't know how broccoli tastes or cabbage or even meat if you're a meat eater because we put so much salt and pepper on it. So I wanted people to really start awakening their palate with herbs. Herbs are so important. They, they wake up the food. They wake up your mouth. You have a little happy little party in your mouth with all the herbs and spices. So that was one reason because I love the, the mixed stuff and I love to see how it's going to come out. And so that's how the season blends became. And um, that's that's the story of the spices. So, Chef, um, first of all, you 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 got something that caught my ear. You said chocolate chip. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my goodness. Chocolate chip cookie mix. Oh no, but you know what's really good? The oatmeal chocolate chip cookie mix. Anytime oh, you say chocolate oh chip around me, Chef, you got my attention. But the only thing is that they like to stay around after I eat them. You know, I have to. I have to make sure I get the diet chocolate chip cookies. Maybe you no, can no, no. You just don't eat as many. That's all. It's yeah. no fun. You got to eat the real stuff, or you're going to eat just a bunch of half stuff. You know, it's almost like when you get the um, the waffles in the freezer, and they have they say they have fruit in them. Well, I don't like those because they only have little speckles of fruit. You might as well go on and make a waffle mix, put a half a cup of fresh fruit on top of it, and then you're getting twice your antioxidants, twice the flavor, and you get that natural sugar. Well, well we just had uh, Periscope come through with uh, Cecilia Broussard, another AIB, but she, she said anything with chocolate gets her attention. Well, I'm with her on that, I tell you, especially chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so we're going to go back down to Australia in a minute, but I have a question that needs to be answered here. Is chef, we okay. are chef. We are seeing a rise in uh, child obesity here in America. Do you have any programs or education that can help, or I guess this could help. Uh, this book could help also, but to help a parent get an early um, plan of attack on that, because you know when you drive through a, a drive-through restaurant each night for dinner, that's not healthy for a child. But we're seeing a lot of child, uh, child obesity, obviously, if you look at the statistical, even from the government. So what can we do as parents to, I know we talked about, you know, the fruits and vegetables earlier, but to try to get a child to understand that they can't eat that all the time. I mean, it's age appropriately, but the question needs to be answered for this viewer is what can we really try to do as through our ministries or something to help that child obesity problem we're having? Well, Keith, it starts with the parent, always. Um, if the parent will just take a minute, preparing, preparation is a key as well. If you prepare, well, I had four children, go, I'll digress. I had four children, and they would always want to go to a fast food place. And I'm, I was like, oh, no, I can do that. And they wanted McDonald's. 
And I was like, because that was back in the day, that was all we had was McDonald's. So I was like, I could make a McDonald's. And so actually I did. I would prepare it at home, the French fries and everything. But we ate a lot of sweet potato fries then. And so, um, and you have to start early. If you start early, it'll just come natural. But as I said uh, in the beginning, if you're later on, then just prepare a little bit better. Um, you got to gradually get it into them. And, you, and as I say, you got to make it fun. Also, it's not a, just about eating. You got to walk. You got to exercise. You got to do something. And all of these things can be done in a family um, orient. You can, after dinner, you can go for a quick walk around the block. Um, they can ride their bikes or they can roller skate or they can skateboard. Um, the parents, you guys be careful getting on those skateboards, but the children can. But just walk. Make it a family jump rope. Um, I don't know, race the kid to the next uh, light heating of the water. I keep a container of water when I have my great grandbaby around, and I put like fruit in it, like lemon, berries, strawberries, um, mint leaves, and it looks so pretty. And they're outside, they're playing, they're thirsty. If you put that water out there, it's all nice and cold or room temperature, they'll drink it, I promise you. They'll, they'll just tear it up, actually. And so, again, with the food, try to eat leaner meats. Um, give them more things to munch on. Give them Cheerios, carrot sticks, celery sticks, um, and fix a complete meal. If you sit down and eat, I promise you, the meal will taste better. They'll enjoy it, and it'll be healthier for them. Well, you know, those are some good tips. Uh, they really are, Chef, because, you know, it just, it's really sad to see. I mean, even I read articles about children that, that you know, lose their life young to that, and, you know, so anything to do as parents, but there again, it's, it's the parent's connection with that child and that's what we teach is that your life is about being connected to your children and connecting with them early about eating you know and, and this book can help them do that as well so all right uh, well, i appreciate that chef did you have another comment before i go down to australia Well, I was just going to say about the, um, a lot of kids like chicken nuggets. You can make your own chicken nuggets, I promise you. And, and going back to that dipping sauce, you can dip it with the hummus. You can dip it with the Greek yogurt, put a little uh, anything in it to flavor it up for them. So you can make your own chicken nuggets, I promise you. They will let you season it good enough, they will eat it, and they will not know the difference. And stop letting them control. It's up to the parents. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to cram it down their throat, but make it very nice for them. Make it enjoyable for them because I tell you, if you don't, they, they get teased at school. They get bullied at school, you know, for being overweight. They don't want to participate. And like I said, go outside, leave the game board or the game board or whatever they do at home. Leave that at home for a minute. And then when you sit down at dinner, cut all the electronics off. No cell phones, no TV, no radio. Then that way you have a chance to sit down and talk with the children. I know it would be hard. I know. but And you can look them in the eye. You can see what's going on in their life, and you can talk to them. I just think it's very important. That, that to me, that dinner time is so important. You know, Chef, when I was younger, I couldn't make a phone call because I you know, wouldn't do something or whatever, but Mom cut me off from that rotary phone that was on the kitchen wall. So <laughs> that's right. That's, she was getting that cord right out your ear. You know? That's right. I got one more comment for you, or just uh, yeah. based on something you said earlier, and then we're going to go down to Ariel. You know, Chef, you were talking about the dinner table, and I, I mentioned that in one of my first books was talking about sitting around the dinner table and talking, and turning off the turning off the television turning off even if the parents are interested in the news it's all bad anyway just turn the thing off and sit yeah. there and talk and find out about your child's day talk to them at their school age hey what happened in school today and tell them because this is the safest place is around it's kind of like a business round table you get everything out in the open and you feel like how, you find solutions on how to resolve them right 
So, but I would just suggest to parents that you listen to Chef when she talks about that because it's so important to sit around a dinner table and talk, talk, talk. Put the phones away. It's a no phone zone sitting at the dinner table because I, I, I go out to restaurants, Chef, my wife and I, and I see yes. a whole family sitting there texting yes. to somebody yes. that's talking. You know, so anyway. All right, we're going to go back down to Australia. So put your flying boots on, and here we go all the way, and we are there. Hello, Ariel. Hey, welcome to Down Under. G'day, mate. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not very much like that down here. But, like yes, we do. We love to have a great drink. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to talk about these little veggies. Okay, so if we have my, my daughter, who is two and a half, she is getting at the stage where she's very picky about her food. So what's some of the ways that we can hide those vegetables? I'm talking about sweet potato, pumpkin, peas or broccoli or cauliflower. That's what we call them down here in Australia. What is the best tips on how we can hide those terrible little veggies in our food so our children can enjoy them? Okay, well, cauliflower is easy you can make mashed potato cauliflower you can make roasted cauliflower and they really sprinkle a little garlic on it a little parsley um, if you have like whatever vegetarian uh, butter that's good for them they'll love that carrots you can steam the carrots a little bit put a little brown sugar on it or a little honey or stevia whatever it is that you sweeten just a little bit and um, if you Glaze it just a little bit. It's edible. They'll love it because it brings out its natural sweetness. Uh, to me, roasted vegetables are the best thing, and kids love the roasted vegetables. Um, broccoli, well, I don't know. It's nothing wrong with eating raw. I tell you, if you let them try something raw, like the broccoli, uh, even the cauliflower, bell peppers, Kids love raw stuff. Once you, once they taste it, it, but see, the thing is, a lot of parents don't like vegetables. So, we do. yeah, yeah. So we're going to have to change these adults thinking that vegetables are even good for them. Um, I have a friend, she says she's a meat eater and I'm not a meat person. I love vegetables. You just don't know the variety, the fun you can have with vegetables. You can roast them. You can stir fry them. You can uh, eat them raw. I tell you, nothing is wrong with raw. And so we've all gotten away from that. And again, we really need area. We need to learn how to prepare the food because a lot of us, we cook the life, the nutrition. We just cook it until it's mush. So if we just not cook it so long, Season it better with herbs and spices. I guarantee you the children would love it. And then you don't absolutely. have to hide it. And I love it. Absolutely. Oh, I just, yeah, that's just, okay. <laughs> I was thinking of a little tip when you actually said that because we were talking about, you know, herbs and whatnot. And and I was thinking that, you know, the, the container herbs that you can get where they're already dried, they are great. However, I think that fresh is yes. best because it always tastes better. And I also like to share a little tip with uh, parents who are finding hard for their children to actually eat all of those veggies and eat certain fruits, is put a little bit of ground cinnamon on banana or apple or a bit of lemon juice just to help sweeten it up and give them that extra taste. Because my daughter loves just going to the fridge and yeah. taking out that lemon juice. She gets stuck on it all day, seriously. She absolutely loves it. I don't know why. I'm not a fan of lemon juice, except for in water. And I also like to share another tip too, if you're having dramas with moving your children over from, say, lemon juice or orange juice or apple juice, I'm not a fan of the juices unless it's actually fresh. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling with that, is to make water icy poles. And what water icy poles here in Australia is the little sticks little containers that you fill water in or you put frozen berries or fruit or strawberry, whatever you want to put in it, then you freeze them in the freezer. And here in summer, because it gets very hot here, that is the best thing because my daughter has to go dairy-free, so she's uh, gluten-free as well because she has an allergy to all those sorts of things. So I've got to be very careful about her diet or her nutrition. And I like to put all of that in the freezer so when it's ready, when it's hot, she can always have something 
to sort of suck on. It's also a great way to introduce water. Absolutely. I thought I might share that little tip because it's me being a mum. I thought that might be a quite an easy thing Absolutely. for some parents. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, those are great Absolutely. tips. And also, Ariel, with a pudding too, you could freeze the pudding and do the yes. same thing with the sticks, add a little fruit to the pudding, and they'll eat that as well also. Yeah, I also have another great question to ask too. Well, as soon as we were talking about, you know, boiling and steaming and frying, all those sorts of things, mm -hmm. do you believe it's much better for vegetables to be half steamed so they're on the borderline of not being like mush or too soft but still being firm? What do you recommend there? I, I believe a steamer, I love steaming vegetables uh, because then you sort of get it, as we call it in the culinary industry, is al dente. Because you want it crunched to yes. the bite. You don't want it mushy. You don't want to lose the nutrients. So, yeah, I, I love steaming. And that's why I say even stir fry. Stir fry is quick fry. So mm -hmm. you're only like tossing the heat in the heat for a little bit and you're not cooking it. Um, I like to stay away from frying as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm a fan of roasting, baking, and stir fry and steaming. So, yes. Absolutely. So, do you also cook uh, vegetarian meals? And if there's any vegetarians on the line, do you have any maybe some recipes or tips that you can share to ensure that we're still getting protein in our diet well, for our nutrition plan? Right. Well, I love, um, I do do some vegetarian meals. Um, I, my favorite one is um, I like fish tacos. And so I sort of can't, and I love bread. So all the time I mm. eat bread, I make the zucchini um, tacos, um, taco shells. I'll make those. Um, what else do I do? Vegetarian. Um, oh, uh, this awesome and amazing roasted. I do zucchini, tomatoes, and onions, and just line them up in the pan and put a little olive oil on it, some fresh basil. That's awesome. Little, a little tomato sauce, and I make my own tomato sauce, so it's all natural. It's not, you know, uh, full of sodium, and so that's a good thing, too. You could do that very quick. Take few tomatoes, mash it up, some onions, and boil them down just a little bit. And that's your add a little uh, kosher salt, and that's it. That's your tomato sauce, and it is awesome. Put it over your veggies a little bit. Um, pasta, I love pasta. Um, sometimes you have to stay away from it, but I love it. And um, I'll put mix it. That's another way you can mix vegetables for the children. Children love pasta and make it colorful. Please make your plate colorful. Do not let it be all brown or all white. Put some green, some orange. I mean, I love color. I, I promise you, yellow, uh, red. I just love color. I do. I think a plate should be happy and it should be attractive and seductive and draw you to it. So. <laughs> Exactly. Like we said, food's got to be fun. Same with cooking and family time. Yes. So I was thinking a great question too, since we're talking about making our sh sure that our, you know, our plate is very colourful and very edible. What is some of the recommendations for portion control, especially in our children, because we're talking about obesity as well, and it all, it all starts with what we are eating here in the home. So do you have any recommendations for that? I do. First find out what, well, actually, I think toddlers are supposed to have like 1,300 calories per day. And a lot of them, if they get it, it's like over, but it's over on the wrong thing. It's like three orders of French fries or, you know, because it's easy to go through, drive through and just hand them those fries. And they're dipping it in the ketchup, which is full of salt and all the preservatives. So you don't want to do that. But portion size... Um, half they're supposed to have like a half a sandwich a half a banana a half a fruit anywhere between a fourth to a half um small small is always better um and then if you give a bunch of small then it will seem like they have a lot of stuff and then they'll they'll munch all the time as with adults as well as on there and always drink a glass of water before you eat and that help you get full and I just think, just think small. Just always think small. Even in fixing your lunch, you can have 
three or four or five containers of food, small containers of food where you can eat and munch all day. And then you'll feel full. And then by the time dinner time comes, you won't eat a lot. You can have a salad. You can have something small, but always think small. We really need to start getting smaller plates and that will help us not fill our plates up. Seem like everybody has these humongous mm -hmm. plates now and you think it should be covered with food and no, think small. And you can always go back, but I tell you, if you think, and if you sit down and eat right, you'll feel better. Your food will digest better and you'll feel fuller. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here and sharing those amazing tips with us because I can, I'm sure there are so many of us out there who can relate and, you know, wondering what the heck do we put on our plate and what we should be putting on our plate. Exactly. Because sometimes day-to-day -day life does get very stressful. Yes, we do go back to those convenient foods because it's easy. So I'm going to bring it back to Keith because I know he would like to have share some more questions and do a reset for the show for all of our viewers. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> thank you, Ariel, and thank you, Chef Nettie. I wanted to just bring it back to your book. Um, so people, that's what we, we shared your book earlier. We applied it on Amazon, folks. So tell us again, this book is going to help me. If I just got this in the mail and I didn't know anything, it's a daily progress, right, on what we're eating and yes. the healthiness of our eats, right? Yes. The book is um, geared to show you, it has a journal section. Uh, you start your day off with a prayer and an affirmation. And then it has a journal section of how, what you've eaten that day, what, or what you haven't eaten. And so at the end of the day, it has a sheet where why you were busy that you didn't sit down for lunch, why you missed lunch or why you didn't eat breakfast. And then it's into weeks, it's a, a six week prayer journal. So at the end of that week, you can go back and say, oh wow, I only drank two glasses of water or I only took my medicine correct one day out of the week or two days out of the week because if you don't write it down you don't see it and you forget it we live a very busy schedule a very busy life and we forget things we forget not to eat or we're too busy we're running to meetings we're running to pick up children we're doing things and we just don't have time for ourselves these temples are the only thing that we have. And if we don't take care of them, we will not live long. And so that's what the book is about. It's more geared to just showing you what you need to focus on, how much food you need to put into your body and your meditation time with yourself and your body, your temple. Absolutely, Chef. And, and we couldn't, you couldn't have wrapped it up even any better than that. I believe that because, you know, I... I've had illness and, and got on a lot of medication and I found a natural supplement. And, and the, I say that because anything that grows, anything that, that comes from, from God or from the earth, you know, that, that, that yes. is healthy for you, you put it in your body, it can't hurt you. I've never seen anything you put in your body that actually, that, that was meant for food that comes that's grown can hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, we have a little garden around here and you know, we grow things in the little boxes and all. That's a big thing. Even in the urban areas, when you've got a small place in the city, you can buy these little urban boxes, you know, that put out in the backyard with dirt and, and all this. So you can be a gardener, folks. You can grow your own vegetables because it's much better than getting those out of the store, right, Chef? Because they put all that wax on there and chemicals. Yes. So, but I, I, I tell you that, that when... I want to tell you real quick, sure. even if they didn't have a flower pot, you can use containers. You can use a coffee can. You can use a, um, a, mig, a milk gallon jug. You can use an oatmeal uh, container. I'm all about recycling, reusing. So all those things you can use. So if someone doesn't have a flower pot or a urban box or anything fear not you have plenty of things that you can recycle reuse and replenish the earth with i promise you absolutely well i'm going to go i'm going to ask ariel to share our facebook page as we kind of wrap it up and i'll be coming right back and end up here with our lovely guest sheriff uh, sheriff <laughs> <laughs> sheriff Nettie, i know <laughs> 
So, uh, and Ariel, just tell them a little bit about our Facebook page because we keep getting more and more people each week. <clears throat> Absolutely. I'm quite happy to share our page. I will just switch it over to a view pages visitor so you guys can see what it actually looks like without looking like you're an admin. So let me just share the screen and we will get started. So one moment, we'll just bring that up. Okay, can you see the screen now, everybody? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is where you can find us um, at facebook.com. I'll just move that out of the way for come back up. You can find us at www.facebook.com dash the straight talk. This is where we are at. So basically the straight talk for parents talk show is basically is us helping mums and dads to enhance, enrich and encourage connections with our children daily through confidence and courage. So this, guys, is just our Facebook page, and we'd love to have you there. We are always showcasing all these amazing guest speakers. We always have something amazing going on. We're always sharing. We're always having some amazing tips on here. So we'd love for you to come and join us on our Facebook page where you can get connected with us. You can also, if you do have a story that you definitely want to share, you have a message that you want to share with the world, you can share that with us at the Straight Talk for Parents. You can either contact Keith or myself, or you can even pop over to the Straight Talk for Parents Facebook page and leave us a comment, or you can just click the contact us button. Mm. All righty, so I'm gonna bring that back to Keith because that is our Facebook page. We love to get connected, and this is what we're all here for today is through connection and collaboration and help helping parents. Well, thank you for that little uh, commercial area. We are definitely growing and getting uh, requests in from folks and we're trying our best to get to, to some of the other things. We've got about three or four weeks booked up already. So we're real excited about it. Chef, you have been awesome, but there's only one problem tonight. You got to come back. We didn't get it all. <laughs> we might have a cook. We may have a cooking class on here. You doing this in your kitchen. What do you think, Ariel? I think it's absolutely a brilliant idea because I'm sure there's going to be so many parents out there wow. who are going to absolutely benefit from Chef Nettie and teaching us how to actually cook because I can imagine there's so many parents out there are going, how do I cook five minute, five minute meals or how can I do some meal prep, you know, that makes it easy and stay away from those convenient foods only in moderation, right? So I can imagine. Imagine there are so many of us out there who's going to be so excited because I'm excited to learn how to cook Chef Nettie's way. <laughs> and I am so <laughs> excited. I, I mean, I love to cook and I love to show people how to cook. I mean, that's such a passion with me because um, what's the old saying? You can teach a person, you can feed a person a fish for a day, but you can teach them how to fish for a lifetime. And I think that's what we really need to show people um, and share, let them know things because everyone's busy. Nobody knows how to do things. And so I'm just excited. You guys are doing an awesome and amazing job uh, putting the word out there, straight talk with parents, uh, because we really need to have some straight talk, some straight talk, no, you know, frills, nothing, straight up so we can save our children. We really have to save them and ourselves as well and our land because the land we need to just – replenish and conserve and just save the planet. That's what we need. Uh, well, <laughs> we, we appreciate you very much, Chef. And uh, you ever come to uh, North Florida area, you got a kitchen you can work in right here for sure. Well, <laughs> but I, I wanted to tell you that, um, you know, I've got an idea. Let me see here. Chef, I'm going to kind of go out here on a limb. What do you think about okay. sending us a couple of your – good recipes for kids and we can put them on our page what do you think i would love that i would love that for sure super well we look so forward to posting those like you just need a couple <laughs> well you send me whatever you feel led to send me and we're going to get them on there and just kind of give a little bonus to our, our viewers tonight and those that come on our facebook page because we just we just believe in in what you're doing absolutely uh, your book you know, Glenda really likes the book, you know, and I'm, 
I'm just enjoying the food so far, getting into this this whole thing about thinking about what we're eating, you know. Um, but I'm I'm doing better. I've lost quite a few pounds already this year. I'm excited about the the, the track I'm on, and it's it's a decision, isn't it, Chef? It's what we put in our mouth is a decision, you know. Um, we have to decide. We have to have a plan. We have to decide, folks. Regardless, whether it comes to children, whether it comes, I mean. Next week, we have a special guest coming on mm -hmm. about healing agents uh, that, that within your body, she, she was diagnosed with, with, with a, a big disease, but how she took control of her eating, how mm -hmm. she took control of what went in her mouth. Um, just because the doctor said put it in her mouth, well, Dr. Angie didn't do that. You know, she didn't research it, and that's what you got to do when it comes to eating, exercising, anything. Just, just because somebody says it, don't make it true. But this book right here will help you get something in your body that's going to, to make a difference over time. You know, I mean, all these things were made for a reason, right, Chef? They're all good. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And anything that has, it's from a plant base is good for you. Because uh, if you plant a chicken leg, it will not grow. It will just rot. But if you plant even... A celery. I mean, it will. It will come up. The celery will grow again. The onion will grow again. But that chicken leg is not going to grow. So just think about it inside your body. You know, you just really need healthy green vegetables, yellow, purple, all kinds of stuff inside your body. Plant-based. Just think about plant-based. And I guarantee you that will help you do a lot better with your eating. Well, that chicken wing may not grow in the in the uh, in the ground, but if you eat enough chicken, it's going to fried chicken. It's going to grow on you. So you got to be careful with that for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Chef Betty, sure. who wrote the book Body Image, and it's a six-week daily journal, prayer journal on how a lifestyle eating chance change. Chef, I've got a radio program starting soon, and you're going to be one of my guests eventually. So, but we're going to have you back right here on Straight Talk in the near future and i like that idea maybe we can just cook up something or talk about it from the kitchen of chef Nitty. now that you know that's like that's great cooking you don't have to go to one of these food network folks you just come right here yeah. on that night we're going to talk that one up and we can't do any taste tests and we don't have any scratch and smell uh things going on the room here but i can tell you this that She's going to share some recipes with us, Ariel, and I'm excited about trying them in our own kitchen. I'm sure you are as well, and we look forward to bringing those to you soon right here on Straight Talk for Parents. Until next time, this is Dr. Keith with Dads for Life and my co-host way down there in Australia. Hey! There you go. <laughs> Did you say good day, <laughs> You missed my cue there, Shannon. So. And we appreciate my admin, uh, Miss Glenda, helping me out tonight on that end, watching Periscope, and the questions are coming in there. You got a lot of attention there, too, Chef. And we'll be sharing this out on our Facebook page very soon. And we appreciate you, Chef, and thank you so much for coming in. Folks, get the book. Amazon, go ahead. You know, it's not going to break the bank. You have to mortgage your house to get this book. But it will help you get some good eating in your body. So God bless you, Chef. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we, will, and we will be in soon. You got any last words for us? I sure do. Thank you all for having me. God bless you. Down under as well. And my saying is eat to live and not live to eat. Okay? I like it. That's I like a good one. It. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you all next week at 6 p.m. There she is, just doing it right. Did she teach you that? Did she teach you Yes, that? she did. She, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I was just stuffing my face. <laughs> no, no, I love it. I love it. Smooches, smooches. Good kisses to everybody. You guys have a blessed and amazing week, and thank you so much. Until right. next time. Stay with us just a second. I'll stop this. Goodbye, folks. We'll see bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.